Welcome to the inaugural episode of Scrap Cooking. I'm Harry Clooney. I'm the executive chef of a restaurant in Ottawa, Canada called Gas Local, and I'm here to show you how to maximize everything you've already got in your kitchen. I want to give you a couple tools in your tool belt so that we can stretch that dollar and also minimize the waste that we also have. <music> So I'm going to show you how to use the rind of your lemons to the stems of your parsley or other herbs, the cores of your cauliflower, ends of your cheese, even the hard bits you might not think or the dried out bits, um, ends of your onions, and uh, really just start thinking about food a little bit differently um, so that we can really use everything. I had a teacher in school, and I will never forget this, in my entire career, it has sort of always been in the back of my head, but she said to me, don't throw out flavor. And I've never forgotten it. And throughout my career, I really like to try to force myself to be creative and, uh, and think of different ways that I can use the different parts of, whether it be meat or vegetables or, cheese or dairy products. So um, I want to share that knowledge with you that I've cultivated over my career. So today I'm going to show you how to use all the other parts of the cauliflower other than the florets. So it could be you've made crudite and you've got the cores left over or you've done, um, you've roasted your cauliflower and you've got the cores left over or your cauliflower is about to go bad and you'd like to use it before it's gone. So what I like to do is I like to go in just with the tip of the knife and sort of take the leaves and stems off. Now don't throw them out, there's goodness in them too. So with the cauliflower stems of the leaves and the leaves, um, if it's kind of yellow or slimy, like put it in the compost. So right here, this is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna put these leaves in a separate pile that you can use for another recipe. And these stems I'm gonna keep because they're gonna go in our cheese sauce. So these little bits of stem, they're just sort of like the core, so they're nice and flavorful. And I'm just gonna chop them up into small pieces. We're gonna be blending it later so they don't have to be uniform. They don't have to be uh, perfect dice. We're just rough chopping them and uh, I'm gonna give them a little rinse. And now I'm gonna put them in the pot. I'm just gonna not turn it on, not do anything with it, just like that. So now, with this cauliflower, I'm gonna take the florets off. So I'm gonna go in again with the tip of the knife and just get it so that the florets come off. So I kind of go in and then I kind of push it with the knife. Once you get to this part, it's actually easy just to kind of just do that. So this core is um, delicious and it cooks down really well. So you could use it for soup. I mean, today we're gonna make a cheese sauce out of it, but what I like to do is just gonna move my cauliflower florets over there and I'm just gonna cut it in half, cut it in four, and then again, I'm just gonna rough chop it. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's gonna be simmering and then it's gonna be going in the blender or through a potato ricer if you don't have a blender. And again, I'm gonna put that in a colander. Now I have a couple cauliflower cores I've been saving. So I like to, if you wanted to make a bigger soup, you could be, if you go through cauliflower, if you could either freeze them um, or you can put them in your fridge and uh, leave them uncovered, uh, just in like a little container. And that way they'll dry out a little bit, but they won't mold. So, we're, and then when we put it in the pot with some milk or some non-dairy milk, um, it's gonna rehydrate it. So you don't gotta worry about that but they could be in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. And when you have enough, then you can make soup out of them or you can make 
the cheese sauce we're making today. Um, it doesn't have to be just cauliflower. It could be uh, broccoli stems, or it could be, there's a, a cool um, vegetable called Romanesco that kind of reminds me of dinosaurs, but uh, it's like a cauliflower, but it's green and it's spiky uh, instead of round. <laughs> So again, I'm just gonna run this underwater, just give it a rinse. So the florets we're gonna roast, and then we'll have the cauliflower cheese sauce to put on top of it. And then you're using 100% of the cauliflower. But the cheese sauce could also be used for later, it could be used for something else, it could be used for potatoes. Got a sheet pan. And I've also got an oven that's been preheated at 425. Really not doing much to it. I'm just gonna add some canola oil, some light oil, um, neutral oil. Could be canola, could be sunflower, could be vegetable, whatever you got, and just some salt. I'm just gonna give it a little shake. Then I'm gonna put it in my oven that I've got at 425. So, for the sauce, we're gonna take some 2% milk, or non-dairy milk, or anything you wanna use, could be coconut milk too, and we're just going to just go until it's kind of mostly covered. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. Put a little bit of water in here, and this is a good way to use up the little bit of milk that's left in your container. So just put a little bit of water in it, and then you can pour it out. We just want it to cover, and that's it. And then it's also already washed out for you to put in the recycling. So now that we've got our uh, cauliflower cores and the little bits of the cauliflower and the milk, um, we're going to turn on the stove and we're just gonna put it on medium heat. If you're using an electric, um, an electric stove, I find that they're a lot hotter, so I'd actually put it on medium low. And then we're just gonna let it hang out. Um, if you had little bits of onion or little bits of garlic, we could also throw that in there. Um, Really, it's up to you what you put in there. It could be anything. Um, but yeah, so we're just gonna let that hang out. Okay, our cauliflower has been chilling out and I think it's almost done, but let's check. So what we want is that the cores are nice and soft. So I'm just gonna take them, just be careful because it's super hot. Um, yeah. So you can kind of squish it. <laughs> She's done. All right. So I'm just going to turn it off. Ooh, there we go. And we're going to take some cheese. Could be any cheese. Any cheese you got in your fridge. Any little pieces of cheese. Um, this is sort of a semi-soft cheese, which is good for this kind of sauce, but really it could be anything. You like blue cheese, get your blue cheese in there, put brie, put cheddar, really it's up to you and your tastes. So I'm just gonna grate a little bit of it. And it doesn't have to be new cheese, could be old cheese you got. Um, sometimes I like to uh, hold on to my cheese ends and uh, you can keep them in the freezer. If you keep them in the freezer, then you're gonna wanna add them to your sauce um, before uh, so that it can thaw and melt a little bit. But this is such soft cheese that I don't really need to uh, add it into here right away. So I'm gonna put it with the uh, in the blender with everything and it's gonna melt as we blitz it. Okay, so if you don't have a blender, that's okay. You can totally make a sauce. It's just not gonna be as, uh, as smooth and that's totally fine, still delicious. So if I was making it without, um, I would 
take a slotted spoon or a sieve and I just pour the milk off. Woo. And then I would put it through a potato ricer. Um, you could also use the grater, um, like I said, or if you had a food mill, that works too. That'd be awesome. Um, and then you would add back in, once you put it through the ricer, then you would add the liquid back into it. Um, but for us, we're going to be putting it into the blender. So I'm gonna all of that. And we're gonna add that cheese. And we're gonna add some of that hot milk. Now I'm not gonna put all of it in, um, just in case it gets too thin. Um, and then that milk you could save and use for another use as well. So now anything hot in the blender, you don't wanna put the little lid on it cause it may explode. And that could be real messy and really dangerous. So we're gonna keep this little piece that would often be on the top here. We're gonna keep that off and instead, we're gonna have a tea towel over top cause that's gonna let the steam through and then it's not going to attack you. <laughs> um, I'm also gonna put a little pinch of salt in there. So I'm gonna start it on low and then ease it up. All right, now we're gonna take a look and we're gonna see, oh yeah. So we're not gonna use this in this cause it's nice and uh, thick. So got that nice thickness, looks nice and rich, velvety, just needs a little bit of salt. And again, with the salt, you if you can't sort of taste all of the things that you put in there, the cauliflower's kind of moot and the cheese isn't really coming through, that's when I would add some salt. Salt I sort of do to taste sort of like a pinch to start and then go from there. It's, uh, it's easy to add more salt and it's real hard to take salt out. Yeah, that's delicious. And now I'm gonna cover it with cauliflower sauce. be a good way to get your kids to eat cauliflower. So you sneak in the cauliflower and the cheese sauce. Now it's real hot. But it's really tasty. Your cheese sauce will keep in the fridge for about a week. Um, you can reheat it on the stove with a little bit of liquid and just mix it slowly starting low um, and uh, it keeps pretty well. If you freeze it, it may separate when you thaw it out. That's okay, you can put it back in the blender and blitz it back up and then put it on the stove uh, and uh, you've got a delicious cheese sauce. You could use it in your mac and cheese. It could be used for um, any other vegetable. It doesn't have to be cauliflower. It could be, um, could be a dip. You could put it on nachos. You've got all sorts of different ideas you can use with this. And all we used for this was a little bit of cheese, the, the colors from the cauliflower that you may have thrown out and some milk. That's it for this cauliflower recipe. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube or Facebook at Scrap Cooking and uh, just a note about where we're filming. This is the urban element in Ottawa and the lovely Carly and Oliver have allowed us to film in here. And uh, it is such a beautiful space. They do cooking classes out of here and uh, as well as some private functions. And even cooler is that it was actually Ottawa's first fire station that has been converted into this gorgeous space. So thank you. Carly and Oliver and uh, the team at the Urban Element. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.